All right, what's up everyone? Today we're gonna to talk about skills that you need to have before starting a coding bootcamp. I have already mentioned in the previous videos that coding bootcamps do not require any coding experience at all. However, most of the coding bootcamps will actually give you some kind of prep work with materials that you need to go over before starting a program. Also, some bootcamps might even have an entry exam based on these materials. They're not super hard, but you definitely need to do some work. So technically you don't need any knowledge before applying to boot camps, but you will be expected to have some knowledge when you start a program. So today we're going to talk about some of the tools that are definitely going to be helpful to learn before going to the web development bootcamp. And the first one is going to be HTML. HTML or hypertext markup language is going to be one of the many tools that you will need to learn. So basically what it does is it gives structure to your content so that browsers can actually display it properly. You can think of HTML as nouns in English and if you have ever worked with Word documents, you have probably formatted your text in some ways. You didn't just write a bunch of sentences without any breaks, highlighting, headers, etc. You need to give readers some kind of visual clues to assist them in reading your content. You might incorporate different headings so that your reader can differentiate between different parts of your text as well as introducing line breaks, lists and all these good things so that your text looks more readable. Same thing with websites, you want to make sure that your content is not just boring unstructured text. You want to use the HTML in order to structure everything and make it readable. However, what if you want to add some colors? What if you want to add some taste to your website? Well, for that we need CSS. CSS or cascading style sheets is also something that you will learn and something that you will probably use on a daily basis. Every web developer had some awesome time with that language and they all absolutely love it. So continuing our analogies, if HTML is nouns, CSS will be our adjectives. It is something that will add taste to our page and if we're going to take a look at YouTube for example with CSS and without CSS you can see the difference. So if you ever need to add some colors or make a content centered in some places or even add animations CSS is probably something that you will use for that. CSS and HTML is all you need to create a website, but if you're planning to add some kind of interactivity, for example, loading more comments as you scroll through your favorite YouTube video, you'll need JavaScript for that. So let's talk about JavaScript. And that's going to be a fun one. Notice that everything that we have mentioned is a language, but JavaScript is the only true programming languages out of those three. There are a lot more programming languages out there, such as Ruby and Python, which are also popular amongst bootcamps. Okay, now you might ask, what is a programming languages? Well, HTML and CSS, they don't really do anything. They essentially give structure to your content and style it. And on the other hand, JavaScript doesn't really define structure of your content. It instead gives functional aspect to it. As a very simple example, if you want to make a complex math equation, you can't really do it with HTML or CSS, you will need to use JavaScript. Or if you want a fancy pop-up window to appear after the user clicks next button, then you will also need to use JavaScript. So if HTML was our nouns, CSS, adjectives, JavaScript is going to be our verbs and you would use it whenever you want to do something in response to some kind of action or generally have some kind of interactivity on your website. And as you might have already guessed, there will be a lot of logic involved in order to make that happen. So you will be spending lots and lots of time learning that language and exploring different aspects of it. Well, we have already mentioned three different languages. Well, how do you maintain it? What if you want to make some edits to your code and also have some previous versions for reference? Do you need to save previous files and create new ones? And what if other developers wants to join us and help us write the code? Well, for that, you will use something that is called version control. Remember when you had to write an essay, you had first draft, second draft, final draft, and you essentially had different versions of your essay. Well, same thing with code, you will be having multiple different versions of it and you need some way to actually keep track of all that. 
And for that, you will be using Git. And Git is a software that is going to keep track of all the changes that you make to your files. So let's say you're working on the code and you made some changes to it. And then you decide that you don't really like these changes and you want to revert back to the previous working state. With Git, it is as easy as running one simple command. It is also super helpful when multiple people are working on the same project. As an example, let's say you and your friend are working on writing an essay and together you write an introductory paragraph, but then you decide to split the task and write two paragraphs separately in order to speed things up. And when you come back together with two finished paragraphs, you essentially have two different files that you need to combine into one that you will be submitting. And Git has a tool for that also. There is a lot more that Git offers and we're not gonna dive into that, but I hope that makes sense why programmers use that, which is basically in order to keep track of all the changes that are made to the code. Well, I bet you all have heard about tools such as Dropbox, iCloud, Google Drive. They all essentially offer cloud storage. And coming back to our essay example, if something happens to your computer, you're gonna lose all your files and then you'll have to tell your teacher that your dog ate your homework. Well, teachers might forgive you for that, but what if that happens to the code that your website uses? Well, that is going to be pretty stressful and programmers have tools specifically designed for that and one of them is called GitHub. Basically, it stores all the information that Git has, but remotely. So if anything happens locally to your computer, you can easily retrieve the code from GitHub. All right, if you're going to be applying to the coding bootcamp, make sure you spend some time with all these tools on your own. It will give you a head start as well as give you an idea of whether you actually want to pursue a career as a software engineer. Cool, that's it for that video. And if you're someone that's looking to get into coding, make sure to subscribe. I will also be posting videos on all these topics that we've covered today, as well as different tips and tricks that students use in order to help them retain that much of information. I'll see you later.